Hi, I'm Susan Evans, and today we are continuing our series on Unmasking the Enemy. This is the second video in this series, and today we are going to talk about deception, which is one of the strategies of the enemy. Satan's main strategies, he has four. It's deception, accusation, temptation, and control. And so today, today's video is going to be about deception. How does Satan deceive us? Now, Jesus said that um, Satan is a liar and the father of lies. He says this in John chapter 8, verse 44. Also, Revelation 20, verse 3 says uh, that Satan, um, that he should not deceive the nations any longer. And so God grants Satan the power to deceive. And so um, we are easily deceived by him. Um, and the reason that Satan is so good at lying is that he lies with the truth. Okay, so things that are technically true are said by Satan and then the logical conclusion of things that are technically true are these other statements and they appear completely true. Uh, they appear solid based on things that appear to be true that are technically true that have um, actual things to back them up. And so um, if you have areas of sin, for example, you are easily deceived into rationalizing your sin because you already have a foothold for the enemy to deceive you. Okay, so um, everything that Satan says um, appears to be true and has evidence in a sinister and twisted way. Um, logic is a tool of Satan. He has been around for thousands of years, and so he is able to say everything very clearly and logically, and everything is true and makes sense, and so you come up with a conclusion to commit evil because everything seems right. Um, so, so Satan can logically maneuver you into rationalizing any sin into being harmless or good. Uh, Satan will even twist scripture to rationalize your sin. Okay, so um, we, we can see the first deception of the enemy in the Garden of Eden um, in Genesis chapter 3. And that deception are, um, is based on things that are actually technically true. And then he um, mentions things that aren't true, um, that God doesn't want them to become like him, which is ridiculous because God created Adam and Eve in his image. And so, um, but Satan said, um, in the day you eat of it, you shall not surely die. And when they ate, they did not drop dead immediately. So Satan told the truth in his lie. Now, of course, their body began decaying. They would have lived forever in their bodies if they had not sinned. And also, true death is separation from God because they were one with God before they sinned. And now that separation is death, spiritual death occurred um, in which they had no, um, um, no relationship anymore. And so they were hiding from the Lord. They were ashamed. Um, they wanted nothing to do with the Lord and the Lord had to call them and have them step out and um, say, you know, what they had done. Okay. And so... Uh, deception will also cause a person to make excuses and blame other people um, like Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the serpent, um, and Adam also blamed God because the woman that you gave me, God. And so deception kind of is like a, um, it, it ha it's like a domino effect. Once you are deceived, once you deceive yourself, 
you, you can't see anymore. So you blink and you cannot see. And so you're seared. Once you've seared yourself, I mean, that's the part about deception. You don't know that you're deceived. That's what dece being deceived is. You're not purposely choosing to believe a lie. Most Christians don't do that. And I'm speaking to believers. And so, um, but what, um, what Satan does, okay, not just in the first temptation, by the way, um, he twists what God says. He twists scripture. He says, did God say you shall not even touch it? And he adds something to it. And, um, and, she, and she says, oh yeah, you can't touch it. So, so um, did God say you can't eat from any tree? So um, Satan is insinuating that God doesn't want them to have anything good or anything fun or anything whatever, and that he's a killjoy and wants to squash you, which is not true whatsoever. God is life-giving. It's Satan with his deception and lies that bring death, despair, and sadness into your life. Now, the temptation of Jesus, Satan also twisted scripture, okay? So, um, in the three temptations of Jesus, um, Jesus uh, quoted scripture back. Okay, so, how do you keep from being deceived by the enemy? Uh, the number one thing is to be in God's word and to understand the totality of God's word and understand God's heart. And secondly, you need to actually, and, and that, uh, primarily, you need to yield to uh, the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to yield directly to Christ. That's number one. Yield your life directly to Christ. He is Lord. And you ask Him before doing anything. Lord, is this right? Okay. So you ask God. Secondly, you study Scripture regularly spend tons of time studying scripture because if you understand the totality of scripture then you will understand that um, committing actions that physically harm somebody for example you know that loving God and loving other people is the primary thing so that can't possibly be true to physically harm another person is fine and is good and is right I know a lot of people who believe that Christians and so this horror, the searing of the conscience was caused um, by the enemy twisting scripture and then people lose sight of the main thing, which is to love other people. Um, so there's a twisting of scripture. So if you are twisting scripture and you don't know necessarily, that's why you have to be accountable to other believers that are godly, who are mature believers. If you um, run by them, and you tell them what it is that's in your heart, they can usually check you. Um, but, but really, other believers can also be seared, especially in this day and age, the majority of people, if not everyone, is seared and is deceived and having grown up around television and everything, we are all brainwashed to believe Satan's lies. And so um, we are not aware of the huge quantity of lies that we actually believe. And so to be in the Word of God, which is the truth, helps enormously to convict you of sin. And then also the Holy Spirit in you combined with your conscience. Now, even an unbeliever has a conscience and you either obey or disobey your conscience. If you feel all weird inside, to take something that doesn't belong to you. You feel all weird inside. That's called your conscience. And when you're violating your conscience, you are searing yourself so that it's easier to perform that crime or that thing that is wrong to do it again and again and make it worse and worse and worse. Okay, so our sins become worse and worse and worse as we rationalize, twist scripture, and allow ourselves to indulge in whatever our flesh wants. So is this glorifying to God? Ask yourself if that action will make God smile and that God loves it, okay? Because every single action should be brought under the Lordship of Christ. Every single action should bring God glory. So if it does not bring God glory, it's sin. And it's that simple. 
Okay, so let's see. Um, how do you combat um, deception? Is with scripture and through the Holy Spirit who allows you to understand the truth. And you can fast and pray, give up food for a day, and ask God to show you your sin and that God will unmask your sin and show you uh, any stronghold that you have and you can break through um, the enemy's uh, designs. Now, Satan depends on secrecy and darkness. He can be exposed by shining light. Uh, we are attacked in our minds, okay? And I'll talk more about that when we talk about temptation in a different video. So we are attacked in our minds. A, a thought is put into our mind by the enemy, and this is scriptural, like Ananias and Sapphira, who has put that into your heart. Uh, Satan put it into um, their heart. Uh, the same with David, Satan put it into David's heart to number the people in a census. Satan put it into different people's hearts. So he is able to um, whisper to people like Peter um, rebuking Jesus to not go to the cross. These are all things, thoughts are put into our minds by the enemy so that we are deceived into thinking that it's ourselves and then we act on what we think we thought and it wasn't even our thought okay it was the enemy's thought and we accepted it as our own that's another way to be deceived and um the enemy also he will put lies into your mind at night when you fall asleep and you're unconscious demons whisper into your ear and, um, and you wake up with poison unconsciously. Um, and God exposed that to me uh, a few months ago when I was sleeping. And um, I had experienced, um, well, okay, this is a whole separate video. I'll, I'll explain this in a whole separate video. Um, but uh, the enemy will use any means necessary, including when you're asleep. So I pray uh, before I go to bed that God will protect my mind heart and body against the enemy while I sleep so that I am not deceived by the enemy even while I sleep um, but during the daytime um, we are always rationalizing things and um, and so make sure that you understand what God's will is what God's heart is, um, especially to love God and love others. That's the main thing, okay? Don't be deceived into um, not doing that. Satan also makes evil to look good and good to look evil. Um, and that's how he tempts us by making um, evil look good, okay? So that's a deception. Satan is a counterfeiter. He will lure you with counterfeit happiness. Don't take the bait. Satan is the source of our affliction. And so we indulge our flesh. There is, a, there is pain, there is sorrow, um, you know, and you will, um, regret any sin that you have per have done uh, because we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you will have anguish over what you did wrong um, so it's better to repent of it now um, Satan causes us to surrender to him because he will pander to our lusts and desires that we already have so any lusts and desires you already have uh, you need to ask God to crucify those in you so that you are not um, lured by the enemy into deception in those areas. If we surrender to the enemy, we give him permission to exercise dominion over us in that area. And I'll talk more about that when, when I talk about control and how um, demons try to control humans through oppression and possession and how Christians are heavily influenced demonically um, and how um, we are uh, to um, take every thought captive uh, to the obedience of Christ. So deception is the first uh, main strategy of the enemy. He distorts truth, he twists scripture, and he causes believers 
to fall into sin because of deception. So I'm exposing one of Satan's schemes. I'm Susan Evans, author of Becoming a Prayer Warrior, A Personal Journey. Thanks for watching.